Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. We gonna have... Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my dad. We're all gone. Hey, man, we here today, man. We got a... Hey, we got a nice flavor here today. You know what I'm saying? I, when, when somebody from the hometown show up, man, I get excited. People don't realize, man, uh, you know, people wonder why, like, man, this man, he rep at East Texas. He love East Texas. But, man, I love my people, man, in, in a nutshell, man. Uh, check it, man. We got Mr. and Mrs. Morgan in here, man. Landa and, and Rotunda. What's going on? What's, What's going, going on, on? Man, y'all sound good. Man. <laughs> we practiced that. <laughs> y'all did it in sequence, like yeah. synchronized. I know, I know, I see. Yeah. So, man, hey, man, thank y'all for coming on the show. Thank Absolutely. You thank you for having us. Man, it's, it's totally a blessing just to get, you know, uh, man, seasoned people. You know, I deal with the youth. I deal with a lot. But when I yeah. deal with my people, especially believers, let's get, let, I can take it there. You know oh, what I mean? Because yeah. yes. it's a lot of people that don't, you don't know where they at with what. Right. And, and you have to guess. But when you know that you're sitting in the midst of believers, you can feel it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Some people in the young, the young say, uh, keep that same energy. Right. You know? right. Yeah. They call yeah. it energy. energy. You know? right. 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 So, right. man, hey, man, what you think about these two? This is official, Miss Jamaica, y'all. This is my yeah. wife, oh, man. Yeah. Give it up, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. I love to see um, good couples who can get along, especially Thank in today's you. society where you have a lot of couples who they leave marriage for drop of a dime, any right. little, little thing, any argument. So yeah. especially working together in business. Yes. That's the part. A lot of people always ask us, how can you work together? Mm. So that's, that's how the can you part. not though? Yeah. How that's the thing. How can, how can you not? Yeah. Definitely. But some of the disadvantages though yeah. is you don't ever leave work at work. Mm. You bring work home. That's mm. the part. That's mm. the struggles. Right. Yeah. How do you, do you leave work at work? Yeah, get them, babe. <laughs> <laughs> she go right in. You know, no, I mean, I love waking up and, and, and being able to roll over in bed with, and see her get behind the computer, work all day, and see her take my lunch break and see her, you know. And then when I clock out, I'm seeing her. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what well, makes it yeah. all worthwhile. I'm the same way, right hand <laughs> to it. Yeah, I love to see my wife, yeah, yeah. get to it. Right. That's what he's saying. Yeah, <laughs> all, all day, all day. <laughs> but then sometimes, you know, I don't know if it's just a woman thing. Sometimes you want more time together without the work. Just let's leave the so work true. alone. Yeah. It's just bonding time. Let's, let's, let's so talk thing, about right. something other than work. Right. You right. know what I mean? Let's have some conversation about us right you know yeah. because we are growing and as times we grow we are taste change and stuff let's mm -hmm. find out the, what you like what you don't like hey let's go here let's go there let's go sh dance yeah you know let's go to a lounge let's go hang out let's go watch a movie put the work down well i tell you it, for me i had to learn that in our relationship because when i met her you know i was already an entrepreneur and i you know i was just all about work 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 and and trying to build and so marrying her, I had to rewire everything because mm -hmm. she was more about us bonding even while we were doing work. Mm -hmm. And for me, just learning that, learning that part to, to give her that space and give her that time. So I, I think for me, it was just I had to learn that. I had to learn to be able to give her her time, mm -hmm. you know, while we were working. Okay, but let's go back because, you know, we started talking about work and we got to get into what work is. You know what I mean? We got to get into how y'all met. We got to get into where you were raised, all of the good stuff that happened to mold you into the people that you are today to be able to. Because people don't realize how God put us through situations to mold you into being prepared for the person that you are to meet. Just tell us how it was written. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's start. Wow. Um well we actually met No, uh, let's go back to where you were raised. Oh well I'm 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 from right here in Oak Cliff, Texas. Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff business. And uh, <laughs> over there over there off of uh uh Keast and uh, Westmoreland area, Hampton area. Uh grew up right behind uh Kimball High School. 
mm-hmm. and went to uh, Booker T. Washington for, for the performing arts here. And when I met my wife, it was actually in church. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't raised in church actually. And because my dad was hurt by church really bad here. Mm. And so um, I knew about God. I knew, you know, I didn't understand the call on my life. I didn't understand none of that. Uh, and so when I was about a teenager, I started learning how to play the piano. But hold on. Were you raised by your mom and your dad? Well, both parents, yeah. Both parents. And when um, people talk about Oak Cliff, um, they always make it sound like it's a bad area. It, it has its places, right? It's so like were that. you in the bad, the rough? No, no. no. I didn't. I didn't. And, and, and that was that was intentional because my dad, he had refused. He did not want us raised around that. My dad grew up poor. He grew up, in, up poor in South Carolina. And so when we moved to Dallas, when I was a couple of months old, you know, he had vowed that I didn't want my kids around that. I didn't want my kids around the drugs. I didn't want my kids around the violence and everything. How many children did he uh, have? I'm the youngest of four. Of four. So I've Are got you an only boy? I, I, my brother. He's the oldest, and I got two older sisters. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he had it even. Two boys, two right, girls. Right, right, right. <laughs> but see, and it's funny because I'm the only child of both of my parents. Oh. Everybody else is my half-brother and sisters. Oh, okay. And so, um, yeah, when, he, when my dad came here, he had an angst against the church because of things that it was doing. You know, the pastor would try to hit on my mom and it was about money. And, you know, we we, we were very meager. We didn't have a whole lot, and especially, you know, with, with four kids. Mm-hmm. And so we didn't have the church clothes and the suits and everything. So we, you know, my dad used to get teased for that. And so he just really kind of just pushed church away. And he we, we still love God and we still would pray and everything, but we just didn't go to church regularly mm-hmm. because of his hurt with that. And so I didn't really start going to church myself until I was a teenager when I was learning how to play music and learning how to play piano. And I was always musically inclined. And so... Um, Where did you get that from? It's funny because neither one of my parents played nothing, right? Like my dad loved music, but he they couldn't sing, they couldn't play, they do anything. And so... No I, grandparents, no aunties, no uncles? Not that I know of. And yeah, see, but I, your mom is... I mean, your dad is an artist. Well, my dad's a visual artist, yeah, right? Visual and so I get, my, I get my creative, creative visual side okay. from, my, from my dad. But as far as music is concerned, I couldn't tell you. You know, okay. I didn't. Re- he didn't really know his. He never knew his father, mm-hmm. and I never knew my dad's side of the family. Uh, so how? So, what, what was the type of person like you could say your dad was? Other than you said that he was um, not into the church. Right. You said that he had an axe, you know, with that. But like, how was he as a dad and with your mom? Pops was overall a, a great guy. Uh, he was a military man. So right? very strict and stern. I won't say very strict. Uh, Dad was a little bit more easier than I thought he could have been uh, coming out of Vietnam, Vietnam dad. But he wasn't just heavy handed. No, okay. he wasn't like that. Because you're the baby boy. And I was the baby. Maybe I was because I, cause I <laughs> would see my, my sisters and brother, but they get towed up if they did something. <laughs> I, I, it was a little bit more lenient on me. Okay. So my dad, but my dad had a problem with drinking. Okay. And... Uh, when he didn't drink, he was the coolest cat in the world. But when he took alcohol, you know, he he, he is like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he would be a totally different person. That's why I me mean, today, I abstain from drinking, you know, alcohol, smoking anything, because mm-hmm. I saw how that transformed him into somebody that I didn't want to be. And that's so funny that you say that, because a lot of people will say that as a children and still turn out to be just like their dad. Right, right. right. So what makes that different? Right. I, th- I think for me, it's, it's, it's all about choices. Because, again, I saw the bad in him when I saw him drink. And I knew my, da- my dad was, when he laughed, it was like I knew the w- world was okay. Mm-hmm. When my dad was laughing and jovial and just tripping out. I knew everything in the world was cool. And so that's how I loved to see him. I wanted to see him that way. But when my dad was uptight, you know, jobs were hard to come by. He was very educated, very articulate, very smart man. But there, he experienced a lot of racism. Uh, you know, they weren't really helping veterans at that time, you know, financially, uh, you know, it's so it was tough for him to, to, to keep good jobs here. Uh, so he Dallas. had a lot of hate in him against certain things. I th- and I th- a lot of black people probably here in the United States do have that. On well, the well, let me stop I because she's she Jamaican, so she don't right, know right, about right. what's going on with racism. No, when I say <laughs> we ain't gonna, that, we, we, we ain't gonna let her speculate to. on racism in America. <laughs> good. Now, we're not going to do that. No, no, uh, all no, different we, forms and ways. When I say that, it's different um, percentages. Because some people might have some more hate because of the things that they've been through, and some people might have a little bit less because of the things that they've been through. Well, Rotonda, you being an East Texas girl, you know about racism. I know a lot about that. Yeah, that's right. Um, And and to be quite honest with you, um, 
you know, everybody uh, over here, we over here, we had to deal with circumstances that you may not have had to deal with, but it was a thing for us. And so and, true. and 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 I definitely could understand where you was coming from when right. you talked about your father. And, and that, that, it does become a deal, you know, where you're dealing with different things. You're trying to be a good father in Oak Cliff, Texas, for sure. Right. And, right. and and then was it was it like it is now in Oak Cliff? No, uh, and it's funny because where we grew up, it was safe. I had never heard gunshots ever. Um, now you said West Marlin. Did you say Camp Wilson? No, I, I grew up out near Keast and West Marlin, right behind Keese. Kimber High School. Oh, okay, Kim, right, okay, I get exactly you. I get you. Right behind I had you up there by Camp Wilson. Right, right. right well, no. I had you by Rack Daddy's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I wasn't there. But you know, Oak Cliff grew to that. Like in, okay. back in, when I was younger, it was a melting pot of Latinos, Asians, Filipinos. I mean, white people, everything. Like when I okay. went to uh, elementary school, it was just a mixture of everybody. Okay, you know, and so it grew. It, you know, it, it grew to become more predominantly black. Uh, a lot of the whites, wealthier whites, whites were moving up north. Everything was being built up north. So what people don't know about Oak Cliff is that. You know, you had wealthy middle class white people that were in in Oak Cliff back in the sixties and seventies, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they started moving out, moving north. And so when we were there, I mean, it was still cool. But mm -hmm. then you started seeing the decline, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 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 to this day, you still see it somewhat decline because a lot right. of, and I believe that has to do a lot with the city too, because people can keep up what they want to. Oh, the money is pretty much stirred where they want to take oh, it to. So that I think that's a big issue. I, I think it's a real big issue because we don't have the right people in the right places to speak up for what needs to happen in the right communities. Absolutely. That's right. You see Absolutely. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you talk about racism, you know, my wife being from East Texas, oh, man. I mean, I know it's just for her talking about it. Oh man. It's it dominates. We had a part. place called a Kill Their Cozy Kitchen with 3 Ks. Mm. I told him about, yeah, told that. about that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and didn't nobody so go in, I never seen nobody go in there of color. Right, right. Um, we also had place I I I had friends that got hung and nobody know how they got there and they said he committed suicide deep in the wow. woods. That's right. Wow. You know, we, we had situations where things happened all the time where, you know, you knew that you could get credit at this store, but then you knew already to stay in your place. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that we came up around, you know wow. what I mean? But I felt it was better, and I don't know if you agree with this, but there was a time when blacks stayed where blacks stayed and they mm -hmm. dealt with black owned business owners. Mm -hmm. And I remember those days and I, mm -hmm. I, I treasure those times. It, I mean like the black barbershop, yeah. the black store owners, the black, mm -hmm. and we stayed in our place. Right. Kind of like what this shirt yeah. represents, okay. you know, where, where the Oklahoma thing, where mm -hmm. it talks black about how, right. yeah, it, it, I mean, it, we, we had a time period where when I was a kid, right. I remember in the in, in, in Smithland where my dad was from, mm -hmm. I remember that Bubba Lane store and I remember the Mr. Luther and I remember the, the uh different ones, the Skeeter Lang or or, or C D Weaver yes. uh, uh wood 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 company. Absolutely. So I remember I, that I remember that time and that time mm -hmm. was a good time for, for me. Right, because right. I felt like that was an entrepreneurship just in in a different time and a different way that right. represented our people. Right. And Absolutely. I think we, we we needed that. Mm -hmm. And I think we need it now actually. I, 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 we need it even more now. Yeah. And what's funny is because me growing up in Oak Cliff, I didn't see that. Yeah, I see, didn't, and, I, and that's, see, that's, and that's, that's you know we we got a thirteen year age difference. Like she's thirteen years older than me. Yeah, so I'm I'm a millennial. She's Gen yeah uh, X. Gen, or, yeah, yeah, Gen, Gen Z, Z or, for yeah. sure. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so. Uh, what she saw and grew up around is totally different from what I, I didn't see black businesses, right? Wow. We didn't we didn't see a lot of the, the family unit. We were seeing more broken homes start wow. coming mm -hmm. in, in the in the early nineties and everything. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm the crack generation, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That crack I get it, yeah. I get it. Yeah. And so we didn't see that. We didn't see a lot of businesses and people together and family units. It's like for me, I was an anomaly, you know, to have both of my parents and my brothers and sisters all in the house. I mean, and it's funny because, you know, the the visceral that I got from growing up in Oak Cliff, you know, it has this negative moniker that it's the hood. You know, we got songs about right. it. You know, Oak Cliff, that's my, my hood. hood. Yeah, Look, and, kid and play, kid and, play, song and on play. Right, yeah, you know, yeah. and so it's it, it has this reputation of being the hood and being just, you know, low to bar, just the bottom, but, it, but it's not that, you know. And for me though, it was tough because I was artistic, I was, I was a creative, 
I was well spoken, and that was looked that was frowned upon. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. if I didn't come, you know, with, you know, my hat turned backwards and you know, talking fly, blah blah blah, it was like, oh, nigga, you gay? Uh, something wrong with you? Or mm -hmm. you, you don't you don't? I didn't fit. So for me. It was awkward going up in Oak Cliff. And I'll be honest, I earlier in my life, I had angst against Oak Cliff or against where I was from because it didn't accept me. It didn't it didn't accept the different in me. You know what I'm saying? And so I wasn't um, I didn't have this bravado where I had to go off and show off being macho, being a man. I was just artsy. I was just you no. Know, I was just that cat. I was well spoken. I was, you know, it was yes, sir. No, sir. For me. And so how my parents even raised us. We got teased, we got talked about, you know, as if, oh, we trying to be something that we now, mm -hmm. I, you know, you talk white. White. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, so I got that a lot. So when you get that a lot from where you from. But how did you deal with that peer pressure? Well, I had, I had a strong father. And so what I would do is I would come home and, and be able to tell my dad, pops, I'm going through this. You know, they don't understand me. Why, why are people, and my dad, he was very, he was an artist. He was articulate. So he would just instill in me, son, you just different. God just built you different. And your outlook on the world is different. And so people are not going to understand it. They're not going to understand where you're coming from. You know, just being arts. It's like, I love to read books. Well, we as black people at a time, we couldn't read books. Mm -hmm. We would get beat if we read books. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand why we were not accepting of the fact that, oh, I can read books, I'm, I'm articulate, I'm smart, I'm an A student. Why do we frown on that? But then we esteem the negativity of our culture. We yeah. esteem, yeah, nigga, what's up, blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't understand, I, I didn't get that. And so I grew to kind of resent where I was from when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so meeting my wife, she, I actually prayed for my wife. I actually prayed, to, in about 2003, I was dating this young lady in Hawaii. And she was a Filipino, exotic looking young girl. I thought she was the one. She was beautiful and everything. And I had prayed though about a year before I met my wife and I wrote down a four page letter of what I wanted in a wife. <laughs> and I was explicit. Like I, she, you know, I was, I said, God, if I can't be 100 with you, who can I be 100 with? <laughs> and so it was physical, emotional, mental, everything sexual on that list and i met her in 2004 and i didn't know she was going to be my wife of course i didn't and she was coming out of a tumultuous you know marriage you know she had a daughter already so it wasn't ideal for me but when i say god answered my letter to a t i mean to a t i, I you know we can keep it real i mean there's a certain kind of woman that i wanted as cup size i'm like lord you know that I, hey i like that that voluptuousness you know and she came with that cup and size she came with that cup size you beautiful, know? beautiful yeah but, but, but return to what you did you plan it <laughs> <laughs> you know no yeah but, i didn't plan no. this i get it i get it i get it <laughs> i, I want to go back to something you said earlier about your dad and how yeah. he had issues with per se church right, um right. what was he right? He was right from his perspective. He was right. Um, but he wasn't right to denounce church. Okay. Explain. And I think he wanted to hide the hurt that he got from it from us. He didn't want us to feel it. But he never dealt with it. Did he give you a reason why? Well... There, you know, there were stories where the, the, the pastor would try to hit on my mom. Uh, you know, they would kind of try to fleece the families there because we were a family, we're a bigger family than, than most people there. They would try to fleece the families for money and different things like that. And so uh, just made him feel pressured. It made him feel bad if, we, if he couldn't give more money or if he couldn't do, you know, X, Y, Z. And so. And this was on multiple occasions, I'm proud Oh, absolutely. Because it's easy to get caught up in religion when oh, you're dealing yeah, with. Americanized uh, standards yeah. when it comes to Christianity. Yeah, yeah, so. and I think back then nobody was talking about the realness of Christianity like they need to now, and they're starting to get there now. It's still kind of watered down in some areas, but they sure weren't talking about it in the early '80s, mid '80s, and so 
That, that was day. the humming time. Right. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And thing and, and the thing about it, a lot of things back then would be swept un, swept under the rug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. our generation, when we walk in and minding our business, we end up tripping over that hump in the rug. Yeah. And yeah. don't know where it came from. Mm. I like the fact that uh, your dad recognized when uh, he somebody was trying to run game on him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That's all it is, bro. Already, I mean, you know what I'm saying. You know, he was an OG, so he ain't know what time it was. I mean, cause when you come from the streets and you see the activity, you recognize yeah. it. It don't matter where you put it at. It can be pimping in the church. I'm right. gonna be honest right. with you. And that's and, what it was. And and, and 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 you have to understand that seeing is seeing, no matter where it, right. where it's at, no matter how you fancy it up. And that was the thing. It was like at that time. Excuse me, honey. At that time, they could call out our sins. Yeah, but you couldn't call out the pastors. No. Yeah, he said, "Touch you know, not yeah. thy my not anointed, anointed and do yeah. my prophets no, no harm." harm. Right. Yeah. and like, like I'm not anointed. I, exactly. Now you get it. But <laughs> right. I think a lot of times uh, in the early times that we were dealing with, then I think it was a lot of uh, ignorance. Mm-hmm. I think it was not knowing that that mm-hmm. made some of those things happen. Uh, education is something else. That's why I said the humming part because mm-hmm. a lot of the humming excludes the knowledge. Mm. Y'all don't, y'all don't really, real. Real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> real. You don't Absolutely. have to think about it. You just sound good. It's yeah. a good, it's a, a good sound and mm-hmm. you hear it at the right time and you respond to right. it. And we definitely eloquent when it comes to the sound. You know, mm-hmm. black people are something else. They can, right. they can make sounds that nobody else can make. You right. know what I mean? Right. So I really think that, I think your dad got it right. I mean, yeah. um, I just from the outside looking in, I'll say that a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. Your dad, because um, my children, they never been a member of any church mm-hmm. in their life. Right. Uh, they are the church. Mm-hmm. The word come from the Greek word ecclesia. It means to simply be called out from among them. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to be real with you. We don't forsake not the assembling because yeah, we do yeah. assemble. Yeah. But I just don't put a structure on it like everybody else right. try to do. Right. Um, when I say that structure, meaning you can't, it got to be led by the spirit. Mm-hmm. Right. You understand where I'm Absolutely. coming from? Um, I'll go anywhere with you as long as you know that God got to be in the car. Right. We got to have some, we got to have the word. Right. I can't play with it. Not right. with my kids. I like what Joshua said when he said, if I ask for me in my house, we gonna forget about Lord. what they're doing on the other right. side of the flood and them people. And, right. and, and, and I'm just paraphrasing right. and forget about the Amorites and whose land you dwell. Right. But as for me and my house, we gonna serve I, yeah, I, I know what we going to do. Yeah. Us right here. Right. Yeah. We've been doing it for almost 20 years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I just feel like a lot of times we try to fancy it up in a way to where we make it religious instead mm-hmm. of spirituality. That's right. Just like, but like for me growing up in the church, I always grew knew, up yes, yeah, um, I grew up knowing that, that that was a church over there. So now that my eyes have been open to certain things, mm-hmm. I'm looking at that building over there and saying, you know, that's the building mm-hmm. because it's only a church so-called when all of us go in there and that's when it's a church. Mm-hmm. But then people will be walking by and be like, oh, th- there's the church over there. I'm like, no, there's a difference. I used to turn my music down. And I'm going to be honest with you. The word church is taken out of concept when you do it that way as mm-hmm. well. And you mm-hmm. can confuse people if you don't use it correctly. Right. Because there is a difference. Mm-hmm. And we got to make known, you know, what really is going on. And I'm not trying to tell nobody not to go and worship. You worship however you feel to right. worship, how you got to get to Absolutely. God. I don't tell you don't go here and don't right. go there and they don't do stuff for the community. Because right. you do have good people out here who represent yes. God in the right way. Absolutely. But let's articulate it in the right manner so we don't confuse the young. I, I think people have, and you were talking about coming from the hum generation. Yeah. Um, I grew up in church as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, my dad was a deacon, mom deaconess. You know, we... Baptists and all of that <clears throat> and as I got older and, and, and especially you know now uh, being with my husband we learned yeah the church is a building but it's but we are the church like exactly. you said exactly. we are the church and um, a lot of times I think we misunderstood that we, we, we were so into oh okay this is the pastor or, or this is the first lady or, or this is the deacon of the church you have to understand that people came from the world into the church mm-hmm. so everybody did, it wasn't about God they saw something that they could do that would be something that was quote unquote a hustle mm-hmm. everybody is not the Bible says that you know the fruit that is bare by the right mm-hmm. you, when you see their fruit 
That's where you judge. That's where you look. You don't look. You don't look at outward appearance. Mm -hmm. You don't look at that. But you look at the fruit mm -hmm. of what that person is doing. I don't care if it's a pastor. I don't care if it's a prophet. I don't care if they call themselves that. Because, you like you said, what we walk in is real. We don't play with this thing. We yeah. didn't ask to be prophets. We didn't ask to be what we are in 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 what God has called us to be. So when people play with this, they play with this because they don't understand that's right and they weren't called to do it right. God, he calls you just like you were talking about joshua and you talk and all the other ones peter and paul all of these they were called to be what they are that's right and you have to be called into this and if you're not and if you're playing with this this is not the time yeah this is not the time to play with god but when you think about but the spirit was, of go ahead when you think about the spirit of error and the spirit of truth, right? right. You 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 have, and, I, and and I'm definitely gonna let you speak. Uh, when you when you think about the spirit of error and the spirit of truth, so many people have been taught under the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, 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 and so Tradition. you you can't even you look at them and you feel sorry for them right. because they was taught a certain way mm -hmm. and it may have been the wrong way and they so stern about it. Right. Uh, the Romans chapter 10 said the people have a zeal for God but not according, according to the knowledge. knowledge. Mm -hmm. right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And people do have that zeal where they, they may be doing it and they, they was taught in the spirit of error, man. And I think that confuses a lot of times. And, it, right. and for leaders, who know, I believe know the truth, a lot of them. Not all Absolutely. of them, but a lot Some of them Some of know. them, But they use it yeah, for, right. for what they want to, so they to can benefit, benefit from it. Absolutely. And I think that a lot of times clouds, the, I know it clouds the word. Absolutely. It, it clouds truth. Right. And, 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 and you, you, gotta, you gotta be careful. When you but I, no, I but what, go sorry, ahead. But what I was gonna say is also that we as a people are lazy in a lot of different ways. Absolutely. We don't like to go search for ourselves for the truth. We right. don't want oh to go That's pick good. up a That's book it. to read because the Bible is there. And a lot of times, yes, as a child, I open it and look and I'm like, well, I don't understand this. I get this part, but I don't get that. So a lot of times we look for somebody to teach us, to lead, you know, lead us. Now you have YouTube, you have videos. Let me tell you, when I read, I read, get what I gotta get. And then I look up sermons, I look up teachings, and I try to get bits and pieces because I'm not gonna say I'm gonna listen to everything this person is saying, but I pick out mm -hmm. bits and pieces from mm -hmm. what they're saying. I'm like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. well I can, okay, I get that. I, just to touch on that, and it's, you know, my wife was raised in a church, I wasn't. Like me, so, huh? Right, me and, and so you. For, for me, <laughs> I, but you know what, when I tell people this, you know, some people might take a, a, a offense to it, but I thank God that I didn't, and I'm gonna tell you why I say that. Because for me, my love for God was genuine. It wasn't contrived. I wasn't, how can I be forced to love? He says that all the time. Yeah, how can I be forced to love a God, you know, and I don't understand him? And so for me, I was, you know, I, I was, a, I'll say it this way. I got into all my mess. I did everything that young people do. Girls, sex, wilding out, I did all that. And I thank God that he kept his hand on me because I, I see some cats who did that and they, they came up with STDs, you know, all kinds of things, you know, they, it messed up their lives. For me though, I thank God that I was able to experience that because now my witness is more realistic. And, and, and that's the problem with a lot of us sometimes in the church is that our testimony isn't real because we don't wanna, we don't wanna put out there that we were flawed. We don't wanna, put, we don't wanna be transparent. And so we're losing a generation because we don't want to say, well, yo, young, young blood, I did that too, I've done that. And here's the solution that I found from it. So we don't make Jesus relatable. And I'm not saying everybody, because today, that's so true. this generation, it's we want to see results right away. Right. You right. know what I mean? But yes, people have been more transparent than how they used to, because people yeah. used to be, everything used to be shut up. They would never right. talk about it. Right. Now, because of social media, you see a lot of people talking about their demons, yeah. things that they've been through. So I'm seeing that a lot more. Mm -hmm. It's not there yet. Right. You're not seeing a lot in the church as right. much, but you see people talking about it and it is coming up. It's mm -hmm. just not everybody. Right, I mean, and you see it even, you know, with women going through what they're going through with sexual abuse, you know, the Me Too movement. Mm -hmm. And so now people, are, like you said, are starting to get more comfortable with conveying, hey, I've been hurt. You know, I've dealt with church hurt. I've dealt with molestation. I mean, mental we have health. mental health, right? And so we haven't even, we're just scratching the surface on mm -hmm. those things, exactly. especially in the church. And the, it's so funny because the Bible talks about we are to confess our sins to one another. Mm -hmm. Well, that's counseling. 
That's we don't right. see it like that, but that's actually. Oh, we ca- do. Yeah, that's counseling. Yeah. You, you, you dig what I'm saying? I we, definitely see it that way. Right. I, I, and I tell people, I had them two counselors on here. Y'all got to watch that because I go in about the fact of how can you counsel me if you're not connected to God? Right. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't want to hear from you, to be honest with you. The mm-hmm. word of God has to line up with what you counsel right. me with. Right. right. And if you don't, then I'm, I'm not dealing with that. Right. And people Just don't like live, you said they don't live the, by the word. About right. the doctor that if he ain't saved, why would I have him operating mm-hmm. on me? Mm-hmm. Right. You, know what I mean? you have to ask Absolutely. that question whenever you go to professionals, so to say, right. do you believe in? Christ you know what I mean if I'm putting my life in your hands do you believe in him and then by knowing the word you know how to handle certain things you know just like if I have something against you and I come to you I'm not going to go on social media and say what I have a problem with you about I'm going to come to you you. and say it and if I can't get through to you I'm supposed to go find somebody else who I can talk to and say hey let's go to this person and then even then Let's find somebody else. That's and the book. That's in the exactly. book. Exactly. Right. But people don't know that. And right. that's why I'm saying knowledge is power. And if they just pick up the book and read, right. they'll know how to handle a lot of different things in life. But let me just say this. Picking up the book and read is gonna, not going to be enough. They're going to have to let some enough. things go. Mm-hmm. You know, right. you got yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta to pretty much, you got to let some things go to make room in your life Absolutely. to grow. You can't, you, it, I mean, so many people, that's why they can't understand it, too. Mm-hmm. Because they'll say, oh, I can't get it, or I don't it's understand hidden. it. It's because you are holding on to all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. That's Until right. you let those things go, then you're not going to grow. Right. And I, and yeah. I believe that. Yeah. And yeah. also, God could have hardened that person's heart where it wasn't time for them to, to get that yet. Yes, A lot true. of times I look at that in life because just like how Pharaoh's heart was hardened, mm-hmm. you know, he could have always Moses could have went in there and okay I let them go and that's it. Right. But it's a reason for everything. Mm-hmm. There's a message. It's not our job to know what that message is. Right. But you're touching somebody and that's I always say there's a reason for everything. Right. So your true. life is not that's your so own. True. Right. So true. It's for somebody else. Absolutely. And you might not even know that person. That right. person could be watching your life and you don't know who you're touching. We always i mean we know that's to be so true because our lives um so many people tell us that you know and we know this we we ask god to use us we ask him you know we know that we have a call on our lives we know that you know god is using us and we know that people they look at our marriage they look at us like you we were talking about before the show about working together as husband and wife Mm -hmm. you know they look at that they look at uh, our businesses they look at you know oh god you guys are traveling around the world you guys are are together 24 hours seven you know seven days a week but you know we want to be you know and we are uh i believe that we are what God called us to be so that people can see that marriage does work. Hey, man, it's nothing new under the sun. Priscilla and Aquila did it. Priscilla and Aquila, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were tent makers and, yeah, yeah, and making yeah. bread. They were right. it, and Paul would come around mm-hmm. and come, Right. So, so let's stop playing, man. Right. We know already it is written. Right. Let's just enjoy it. Right. Let's you know enjoy what I'm saying? Because at right. the end of the day, what we're doing, we're trying to live by God's word. That's for right. real. Exactly. Right. That's not right. for not for not for not not to just be uh, uh, seen a man. Right. That's we're doing right. this just to, we're doing this for God. Him. And 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 we need to understand though, uh, you know, we are that open book for a lot of people. That's right. That will never pick it up. That's right. They'll never pick it up. They might not ever watch a YouTube video, but they are watching you. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. And so, I, one thing I'm always aware. Of, see, the, the thing about my wife and I, that Christians need to definitely get a hold of, is that we. We actually fear God. Yes. You dig? I'm not talking about being scared of him. I'm talking about reverence. I'm talking about respect. reverence him and, yes. to, and respect him and fear him. Why? Because I had a, I had a physical father, right? I knew when I could, you know, laugh and joke around and play with my my dad like that. But I knew when to reverence him. I knew when it was father son time. Mm-hmm. And we need to have that same relationship with God. Yeah, you can be friends with him. I talk it. I chop it up with God all the time. But I know that moment, I know that time when I need to go to him in reverence and in honor and respect as my heavenly father. And when you do that, you have when you have that healthy reverence and fear for God, you won't play with him. I knew not to play with my earthly father. How much more am I, am I going to know not to play with God? God can take me out in an in instant. He can take the lungs, the, the, the air out of my lungs in a second. So that's what people need to understand now is don't play with God. You're not guaranteed. Look at look, look what's going on with COVID. People mm-hmm. who were literally here last year 
or a couple of months ago are not here today thousands because of thousands, thousands people. of people gone of a hidden virus that we don't even know where it comes from, what it looks can't like, see it. Or when we it's can't leaving. see it, and when it's leaving, <laughs> right? That's the hand of God keeping you here. Why would you play with that? Why would you play with him? And so we need to get to a point to where we reverence God completely. And see, we're, we're at a point now, God is not playing with us. You either in you out. Or you yeah. out. Well, he, right. he says that. He says that you neither hot nor cold. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And you and look warm, and, yeah. I spit you out. Yeah, yeah right. Reverend, I think that's Revelation 3.16. Right. So Revelation. the thing you got to understand, man, is I understand where you're coming from. Right, but right. love the passion that you're speaking with. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know that, that God is, is in the midst. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's so important that we get the message out there. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. In a way to where we can appeal to the young the youth that's absolutely. the most important part right that's there the absolutely most because important. hey we've done we hey we fought a good fight right. you understand right, what I'm saying? Right, right, we, right. we we hey we we, we still we, fight that's right. right yeah you know but the thing <laughs> is we, we we fought a good fight and we're right. getting older right and and, and uh, the only way we keep this thing going for generations to come is by making sure that we understand how to appeal to our youth i'm yes. being real yeah. i mean uh, to the kids, I'm being real. I and teach them how to find this for themselves. And, and because the part, at the end of the day, we're not gonna always the, be the, here. But the part right. you said a while ago is the living it part in front of them. Right. That part is important. Right. If you can show them by your walk, right. by right. your chest conversations, right. by the way you show love toward others, right. that's how that's how they'll 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 see it. You know, you think about you know you think about the Apostle Paul, uh, who was this murderer, this executioner of Christians, mm -hmm. right? And you had the disciples, some of the disciples were even scared to be around him. Peter Correct. and them were scared to be Correct. around him because of his reputation mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. who he used to be. Mm -hmm. But they, it took a period of time for them to understand his transformation, that mm -hmm. God, that Jesus did indeed call him on the road to Damascus. And they said it took time for them to see this transformation mm -hmm. in his life. And that's what people need to understand. And that's what they need to know, that young people are looking at your mm -hmm. consistency. Are you that same cat? all the time mm -hmm. or you just that on, on that Sunday morning sitting in the pew mm -hmm. you know and for me and my wife we that's a responsibility it's it's more than just a call it's a responsibility to know people are looking and I can't let God down mm. it's not about putting up the show it's about I can't let God down because if I let him down and they see you know a, a crack in the wall with us then that and that vulnerability that we let the enemy come in then that could lose that person. Right. That could lose that young couple right. that's looking to us for hope. And so even in business, it, 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 we have to be of integrity from, from the, how we do our business, how we conduct business, everything has to be integral. Why? Because we do this for him. I look at what you're doing and how you're doing it as a family unit, as a, as a husband and wife with your, ch your children around. You're setting that example for them. How does a man treat his wife while on the job, while in doing what they're doing together. Your daughter is looking at that. Man, dope. You know what I'm saying? 20 years from now, when she, when you're walking her down the aisle, 15 years from now, when you're walking her down the aisle, she's looking at the example of her father and then how her mother was able to receive that. You're that Bible for her. You're okay. teaching her marriage. She's being taught kingdom marriage before she ever cracks open uh -huh. the Bible and reads about it. That's why it's so vital with, with my wife and I, and we take it seriously. Because I don't want to get before God and be like, okay, somebody else's blood is on my hands because I dropped the ball right. or my wife dropped the ball. And, 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 and then there too, you know, my parents been married 58 years. Yeah. And that doesn't mean everything was great. Right. You know, right. Um, you know, my parents in the late 80s and 90s now, we thank God for that. But, you know, that, you know, coming from that time when we were talking about the racism and mm -hmm. the Jim Crow and mm -hmm. all of that, had a lot of anger. Yeah. You know, had mm -hmm. a lot of pent up anger and frustration. And he would get off work. And, you know, when we, I grew up with cattle farm mm -hmm. and, you know, people look at me today and like, are you serious? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, we, you know, they used to call us the, the bonanza of Linden, Texas. And, you know, you guys had all them cattle, but my daddy would do a 10 hour job, come home. And if we didn't have activities after school, you better be ready because we're going to go feed the cows. Yeah. Make sure those cows are fed. Make sure that we got hay. We're getting up on Saturday Saturday mornings, getting hay and, and all that. So I grew up from that. But then Dad would be he, a little any little thing sometimes would upset him. Like, mm. well, what's wrong? 
Mm-hmm. Well, I had to understand where he come from and, and the generation he came from, and I'm watching them, you know, how they they interacted with one another. It'd be arguments sometimes, and you know, it'd be uncomfortable at times. And my husband and I talk about this all the time with our family and our parents. We did not want what our parents had. Right. We wanted to do better than they had. We have wonderful parents. Don't get me wrong. I'm right. not saying anything against them. But we saw some things that they could have done better. Mm-hmm. You know, the communication. I am so much about marriages. And he said that to you earlier. I am about marriages because you growing up, we, we saw a form of it. Yeah. You you know what you know, you're saying is so, so true. But you got to realize also when... Even when you do what you're doing and you feel like it's the best, your kids are going to say the same thing about Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And you do strive mm-hmm. to make your children better than oh, you. Yes. And, and, and your, your, your parents want, wanted to see you have more and do better than them. And right. they tell that, you that. And they, and tell they probably you that. try to do better than their parents for right. you. Right, right. Because look at, look, at your, your, look at what their parents had to come from. Yes, mm-hmm. of course. So it even gets deeper, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And I, I, I cringe at the fact of a lot of times we are hard on our parents and what they've done yes. to us. That's something we get caught up in, yeah. but it's it's something that we really got to be careful with right. because where they came from and what they experienced was something else, man. Right. And that's exactly And as you right. keep going back, right? You know what yeah. you run into, mm-hmm. right? It's it's, it's going to get worse and worse right. every right. generation going back that way from right. what our people experienced. Right. And that's why I said I don't want to go back there because I again we have wonderful parents. You know, and you said about the generation, I, you know, we have a 28 year old. Yeah. And she watches everything we do of from course. business to the, how we interact. You know, she came in, you know, when he came into our lives, my daughter was eight and a half years right. old. Mm-hmm. So she watches everything and she listens to everything. So you're right. We are are you're definitely being watched example, and, yeah. and we're the example for them. And we take it as a blessing to be it is a blessing but I, but right. okay what i want to ask you is you said you're all about marriage you're all about communication and so forth how important it is it to uh, have a spouse that is in christ is um what or should i say what should our viewers look for because i know that you were previously married yes. and that didn't work out right yeah. so what is it about this marriage that that one you weren't able to do the same it was waiting and and one thing i have to say us as women we do not do is learn of who we are we don't take the time to do that we we're looking for somebody to validate us we're looking for somebody to complete us and what we don't do is take the time to learn who we are what we like what we don't like you know and being true to who we really are when Landa came into my life, I wasn't looking for a husband at the time. It was devastating for my daughter to go through the separation and then divorce that my, my, me and my previous husband went through. And so I took the time for me to learn about me, to heal, and to help her through the whole process. I told him, I'm not ready to get married. I wanted to get her through school, all the way through high school. And so, and at the time, we were 13 years apart in marriage. So he wasn't ready for that. But what I want to say is you have to know who you are. Nobody completes you but, but God. Right. You, and when you look for what God has for you or when you wait, then he sends you what I prayed for him. And after, he prayed for you. And he prayed for me. And after my, mar- my first marriage was over, it was devastating. But I had to labor, and and everybody don't do this, and I'm not saying that everybody does this, but I prayed, I labored in that. I stayed with God. I said, I'll wait until I'm ready and you're ready for me. And once I waited, he came out of nowhere. I mean, walking in the church, hair long, longer than mine. I and see him. Oh, he got a lot of hair. <laughs> and and blowing in the wind, and I'm looking like, who is that? You know, and I didn't think this was going to be my husband, but this was my husband. Well, do you, you know? do you? I mean, you said something about, uh, you know, uh, you didn't. 
you didn't look or you didn't you or, or you didn't uh, you didn't, wasn't looking for a husband what, but even the first time was you looking for a husband on the first time well no i wasn't but i was younger i was like 20 what 21 years old 22 years old and i told my you? daughter that when she was gonna divorced? say that she just went she's going through a divorce divorced. right now mm-hmm. that's 30, what they say that's the thing so right it lasted there. 10 years it, it lasted 10 years on paper on paper on paper okay mm. yeah when my daughter was a baby my husband and i separated okay and we got back together and we separated we got back together we finally stopped after we lost two two uh I, a baby two babies actually i was six months pregnant and i had a uh, mis uh eptopic pregnancy and then the other one i ended up birthing i went through um through that you know mm. almost died almost died. how did all of that affect you mentally Oh my gosh. I thought I wasn't going to to make it. I was so depressed. I was so down. I it it was so hard. But you know, with my daughter, I had to push through looking at her and me and her even today, we're very very close. And she helped me get through it. I mean, she was there when I when I got sick, you know, and we were coming home from East Texas. And she was, you know, I was on the floor in the bathroom. And at the time, my husband wasn't even at the house. He was somewhere gone, out in the street somewhere. And she's the one to call the ambulance. And if she hadn't called the ambulance in the time that she did, I wouldn't be here. The doctors told me, they said you had um, not even a 10% chance of living. And how did that affect her seeing that? Because... It's still the small does. situations that we go through in life mm-hmm. like that. As much as, you know, the person was strong during that time. Right. You don't realize how much they put it to the back of their mind and it affects them. That's why some people end up in certain relationships. Mm-hmm. They react a certain way to certain things. And you, you like, why are you like that? Right. But you don't realize it stemmed f- way back from Absolutely. when that happened. Right. It does. It, it still affects her. And that's why she watches us a lot. Because she wants to see the real. Now, she has a relationship with her dad, but she wants to see that real, real relationship, that real marriage. Because she wants to be married one day, but she's gone back and forth with that because of what she saw with me and my first husband, her and her father. So it it did affect her. It affected us tremendously. But again, I waited to get through that because... I vow to God, I don't want to bring what happened in this marriage to the next one and the final one. That's what I was like, God, this is, if you give me another opportunity, this is it. And when I waited, you know, here he is, you know. Patience is everything. Patience is everything. 